this project, the students have been designing and 3D printing chocolates. Um, so we've got our chocolate designs here, 3D printed, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the Meku form box to vacuum form a mould from these chocolate designs. So, we'll start off with the vacuum forming sheets. So the ones that we're using are the transparent food safe sheets, uh, which is really important so that we can actually use those moulds to make the chocolates. So this is the Meku form box. Um, I've set it up, plugged in the standard vacuum cleaner to the rear of the machine. I've turned on the heater over here. So this is the heater dial, turned it on to full and we wait for a green light. That means the heater has come up to temperature. I'm going to set the timer for one minute. And this button here on the left is where we will start the actual vacuum forming. This is the bed of the vacuum forming machine. This is where I will place my moulds and the vacuum forming sheets when I'm ready to start. So for this project we are going to use the one millimetre clear PET G sheets. The reason we're using these is because they are food safe which we will need if we are making chocolates from the moulds. That is ready to place them in the vacuum former itself. So to do that I'm going to lift up the top layer of the forming machine I'm going to pop in the sheet, I'm going to centre it on the seal that goes around the edge and then I'm going to lift up the bottom part and close the handles. That will hold it in place. Now what's happening is the heater starts to heat this sheet. While that is happening, I'm going to set this timer. I'm going to place my moulds on the bed of the machine and just wait for that sheet to heat up. Now sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error waiting for that, it depends how hot the heater's got to. Um, so the, the back of the box indicates between a minute and one minute twenty heating time. I've set the dial to a minute and what I will do is I'll take a look at the sheets to see if they're ready to form um, after that minute is over. So we just have to wait for that to, to happen. And what happens, the heater at the top is now starting to heat the sheet so it becomes very sort of flexible. When the sheet is ready it's all going to happen really quickly. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to firmly push down on the two handles at either side. As I do that and form a seal around the base, the vacuum is automatically turned off and that will suck all the air from between the sheet and the moulds to make the, the mould. I'm just going to test this I'm not quite happy that that's flexible enough yet. So I'm just going to leave it a few more seconds. What you'll notice visually is once the sheet's flexible, it will start to bow down in the middle. And once you start to get a little bit of bowing in the middle, that's ready to go. That's about right now, so I'm just going to firmly push the whole the handles down leave that going for a few seconds and press stop as the vacuum turns off I can then release the handles just pull the top cover out of the way I'm just going to wait a little while for that to cool down um, and then I will be able to remove the mould. So while I'm doing that, I'm just going to turn the heater off and just leave that to cool. So this is the finished form. And if you lift it up, some of them, which have a nice draft angle, drop out of the mould quite easily. This one doesn't have much of a draft angle, so you just need to give it a little wiggle and it'll pop out. This is now ready to use as a mould for forming the chocolate. I just want to show you a couple of examples. Um, so this first example, the plastic hasn't been heated for long enough before forming and what you will see, you will notice around the edges here that is that it's not formed close to the 3D print. This example here is the opposite. This is where the plastic has been heated for too long and what happens then is it becomes too soft and you get this webbing around the corners of the sheet. So, here we've got our mould um, ready to make the chocolates. 
What I suggest you do is do not cut this up into separate individual moulds. I know you've probably got several students work on the same uh, sheet. However, if you cut them up into individual moulds, they won't stay upright while you pour the chocolate. So you need to keep the mould whole with the different chocolates. You can gather those students round and they can all take it in turns to make their own chocolates. Uh, they just need to pass the bowl. So I've got a bowl of melted chocolate here. Um, the quickest way to melt the chocolate is break it into squares, pop it in the microwave for 30 seconds, uh, give it a stir and then just keep putting it back in for 10 seconds at a time, stirring in between till it's fully melted. Just be careful that you don't overcook it because it will burn the chocolate. So I've got the chocolate here now, so all I need to do is I just need to spoon in the chocolate into the mould. Now, you can put a little bit in and then you can add other things such as nuts, rice krispies, raisins, or we can just go for plain chocolates like here. So once you've done one, you can pass the bowl to the next student and they can do theirs. And you just work your way around until all the moulds are full. Don't worry if there's bits of chocolate that drip in between. They will just um, break off once you've finished. I'll just do this last one. Now, because this chocolate's quite thick, you can see these lines on the top. If you then just give your mould a little shake, like so, it will level the chocolates off on the bottom. So the chocolates have now been in the fridge for an hour, so the chocolate has now set inside the moulds. So all we need to do now is we just need to pop them out. So if I just gently press on the back, give them a little tap, 